Welcome to my thoughts on Secret Invasion Season 1, Episode 2. This episode is called Promises. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. And, again, absolutely love this episode. And, yeah, so we start in 95 with a recap of the Captain Marvel film and then skip ahead to 97 and meet Baby Gravik, get a little background on him, and he assures Fury, I'm not afraid to take the stage. And in return, Fury headbutts him. So, let's see the... Yeah, and... Let's see the... the um, I do not know what that notes from first. So, okay. Yeah, there's the thing about, you know, keeping keeping your word. And the yeah, so you know, we we get a little bit of background on how this happened and the fact that, you know, Gravik legitimately feels like Fury betrayed their trust. And I really appreciate the smash cut from, you know, will you keep your word, I'll keep my word, to the end of episode one, which really underlines, you know, yeah, clearly they don't feel like he kept his word and they didn't keep theirs. And, yeah, we, yeah, and, and um, Talos gets Fury away safely. And they do the AI intro again, even though they got fair criticism for using that. So that's a choice. But yeah, um, you know, we we're gonna we're gonna grow old if we wait for Disney to do the right thing. And let's see, yeah, I we. we go to the the train and I appreciate Talos covering for Fury a black man on the train you know what was it between Moscow and this you now you're more likely to find aliens you know which I mean that is a a funny joke but this is a world that has a I mean obviously part of the joke here is that he is an alien in disguise as as a human woman but you know, an alien man, this guy's, but the, the, this is a world that has aliens, like, there have been, you know, multiple, very public invasion attempts of Earth, so I don't think the joke works quite as well as if you just, you know, actually, I guess that means the joke is just a factual statement, yeah, there are probably more aliens on trains between Moscow and the, you know, then black men. And yeah, I appreciate, you know, the, the show is clearly looking to underline the abuse that black people have suffered. You know, the, the first episode brought it up and this episode they, they give, you know, there's that thing about Maria Hill says, you can't say that word. And he says, no, you can't say that word. You know, and, and here, you know, both his conversation with Talos and his conversation with Rhodey, there's talk about the the horrible horrible things done to black people in America. And I appreciate the, the level of detail, you know, he talks about the you know, we the the train cars that black people were forced to use were bad, the bathroom didn't work half the time we weren't allowed inside the dining cart. And they passed the time with the game of tell me something, or was it tell me something I don't know, you know, and he points out, you know, obviously I wasn't going to tell her what was really going on with me and Susie, but the fact that I told a bold-faced lie meant that she knew everything she needed to know about me and Susie. And that is, you know, I, I do hear that's a, that's a thing, you know, black, black people take raising children very seriously and they're gonna keep an eye on the, you know, not, not in like a bad way, but just like, they're not gonna just, yeah, 
Not saying that it's only a black thing, but I, I have heard elsewhere that, yeah, black people are very, very protective of their, of their children, so. And, yeah, you know, the, the, I, I feel like the, you know, this could help, that these conversations in this episode could help inspire empathy for minorities, which is excellent. Are you out of your reptilian ass mind? That's very funny because that I mean there there is there is a bit of a reptilian thing. Actually, come to think of it, there probably always was some of the because the the thing of reptilian, you know, shape shifting. Well, I guess were they always shape shifting? But they were the you know this idea like there are people who think that. Um, Hillary Clinton is secretly reptilian. And, yeah, we're told, you know, there are a million Skrulls on Earth. And that does, of course, really mean, you know, the, the yeah, we're not talking about a small group that has to be, you know, hopefully they're not all militant, but... Yeah, and Talos points out problems that, you know, I do really appreciate that Talos, you know, fights back, fires back during their argument. And, yeah, you know, it's that thing of, you know, can they coexist with the Skrulls or can they not? And, you know, Fury points out it's not just, like, room, it's also tolerance that's an issue for, you know, whenever human beings are, you know, especially white male conservative human beings, are asked to coexist with, you know, a new, you know, someone that they don't consider a member of their in-group. In fact, there isn't enough in this train car either. I believe this is your stop. And we see some of the, the service for Maria Hill. We meet Elizabeth, Maria's mother. And, yeah, you know, points out, Maria believed you. She would have walked with you to the gates of hell. And you didn't protect her. Make sure she didn't die for nothing. And then we have the, I, um, I completely forgot. Did, did we know that Shooter McGavin was going to be on this? I, what's his, what's the actor's name again? Um, yeah, it does, it says here, Christopher McDonald. A news host but yeah really really good. always love to see him he makes the most of like for like almost almost the entire scroll council scene he's just sitting there with a glass of wine like is that what they call airing it you know swirling just and just the look on his face just that's acting you know he can he can make a meal out of literally he's sitting there he's reacting to what's being said just yeah always love to see Christopher McDonald and yeah that's that's oh yeah that that was Charlene Woodard very cool yeah at the, at the end of the episode Priscilla Fury I wonder if that was up no it's yeah the the that was apparently revealed before just today, even the... I don't think I heard it before. I'm glad that I didn't know until the end of this episode. And... Yeah. You know, the, there's the talk with the council, and he says, you know, Fury, he's vapor, he's old. And they talk about, you know, how will we punish you for, for this danger? And... Right, right, and and before that, you know, yeah, as he's going, you know, he's like, if I'm not back in one hour, shoot him in the face. 
I thought I was the only one who said that every time I, I entered a new room. But yeah, he, he goes to the, the council and you know says, you pretend to be man. You play with man's, you know, you use man's utensils and this whole thing, you know. And yeah, he points out the, the flaws of, you know, yeah. As he says, an honest reading of human history, you know. Yeah, re really appreciate that as a, you know, it's not just this thing of, oh, you know, we want we want a place to live, it, you know, he is pointing out actual problems, although, ah, yeah, somewhere he was pointed out that thing of, you know, if you only have the villain say the, the thing that's actually a really good point, then it doesn't, I don't know, I guess I've always just felt like it still counts, but I guess I still, I mean, I've, I've always, like, if, if someone is making a good point, you know, if their if their facts and reasoning hold up, the the um, you know, I, I try not to discount what is said by people I disagree with if what they're saying does make sense. But that's been very easy in recent years. Conservatives aren't making very much sense anymore. You know, right now there's a lot of you know people talk about the the um, the sinking of the of the Titan and. You know, I'm I'm not I I'm I will I will direct you to the there was an excellent video made by I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, but I will have it momentarily. Yeah, let's see. It was an excellent video made by Rebecca Watson. Diversity didn't destroy Ocean Gate sub, libertarianism did. You know, just watch that one for an excellent takedown of the of the conservative yeah I'm not you know I, I know some people on the left are very very happy that you know oh some some billionaires died I don't I don't think this is a cause for celebration I mourn the death of so many brain cells that conservatives must have used to have until they decided that wokeness there's people saying that wokeness sank that submarine when it's just like it's so easy to to learn the actual truth of you know I think it was Elon Musk who tweeted you know oh wokeness is a mind virus yeah we're not the ones you know I, I don't love the word woke I prefer the word progressive I feel like the word woke has gotten you know yeah, it's, um, Solari just did a really excellent video on that, you know, but, you know, if you say the word woke, conservatives are just going to shut down, they're not going to listen at all, but, you know, it wasn't progressivism that, that sank that sub, and, and the, you know, the only people saying, oh, it was sank by a, you know, by diversity, that's only conservatives, you know. Wokeness isn't a mind virus. Anti-wokeness. You know, what What else should, what, what other term should we use than mind virus? It's literally t getting people to, to think that diversity leads to death, like preventable death. Like, that's just, holy crap. Anyway, back to the comforting fiction where, you know, shapeshifters are trying to cause World War Three. That's substantially less upsetting to think about. Anyway, the, the, yeah, so we get the, uh, right, I, I appreciate that Gravik says war as, like, operatically as, you know, Sly and, do I want to give away the other, that other major character in the Sly Stallone Judge Dredd movie, Say Law, so that's, that's fun. And, yeah, Gravik says, uh, you know, we're just hastening the inevitable. What if the Avengers return? 
Gravic has thought of that. The budget for this show is not going to cover that. And yeah, Gravik has made the new general and the not the, the NATO general. He's not going to be any more trouble. And yeah, he says submit, and that means change into your scroll form, out of focus. You know, they're they're gonna try to save money on effects where they can, and you know changing, yeah, having the effect happen not quite in focus, you know, it probably doesn't save, you know, I really hope that special effects, that, that CG houses get a union so that they're not mistreated anymore. And, yeah, I'm not loving the you know, we have this group of, of people who in the MCU are refugees, and, you know, the the, the character, uh, her, let's see, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the character name here, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, one of the scrolls says, you know, we, you know, we did not become refugees because we were too reluctant to, to wage war, but because we were too willing to wage war, which I really fear can lead to an increase in hatred for refugees. I acknowledge that a number of refugees, it is because some of the people, you know, some of the powerful people do really awful things. I just don't think that's a... Gr I think there's a lot of people who are not going to pick up on that... Um, what's the word? Uh, nuance of it. Now, that brings us to... Yeah, um... So, you know she is allowed to leave, but she as she calls in Talos and tells him what the this recent development is, and I have to wonder if Talos maybe knew what was going to happen there. You know he doesn't really strike me as someone who just makes really like the yeah that will make decisions that are careless. When it comes to like tactics and such, I I think he wanted Talos to know, and if she's the one who calls him, that means that the, the you know for sure he you know he'll believe it. If if someone else did, it maybe wouldn't. Wow, eleven people have voted for this episode on IMDb. Ten of them gave it a ten. One of them gave it a nine. Okay, I really don't want to think that it's just a racist who didn't like the the black people talking about their past, but I don't really know what else would... How do you give this episode a one? Anyway. Yeah, and and the... You know, Gia got Gaia uh, goes in and, you know, sees the scientist... And they talk about the harvest and the DNA, and they activate a machine. So there's clearly something going on there. And Rhodey, you know, protects the the, you know, talks about you know Fury isn't working for the American government. He's a private citizen. He's allowed to go to Russia if he so chooses. Did not really like the joke about carpet bombing. You know, it just feels like... I mean, we already... Each of the Iron Man solo films has at least some demonizing of Middle Eastern Muslims. So, yeah, not, not really a fan of, you know, in the first Iron Man movie, he's literally, like, going into 
a country and somehow magically with absolutely no you know collateral damage she's managing to to free you know it's just like yes obviously it would be good to free them but it's whitewashing the american military's actions in the middle east now yeah and and fury calls rody and of course they agree to meet somewhere he's not going to come out in public when people are looking for him like that and points out i'm the last friend you've got and the fact that rody literally says the words you know yeah he starts by saying you know you've you didn't manage to stop the start of world war 3 which yeah, that by itself is already kind of messed up, but, you know, then he says, you flipped America's allies to being in favor of, on, on Russia's side, which, <laughs> wow, um, tell me that this episode was written before Russia invaded Ukraine without telling, without saying those exact words, like, holy crap, but... I don't know. I mean, if they edited it out, I've, at the end of the day, there's probably going to be follow-up to it in later episodes. I'm not sure they could have done... Yeah. It is It is fascinating that they did think that Putin wouldn't continue. Like, I don't know how much the guy has to do to show that he's obsessed with recreating the Soviet Union. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But he's going to keep trying to make it happen. Uh, you know, just, yeah. But, you know, when has America ever turned down turning, you know, painting Russians as the the eternal enemy in, in a piece of media? That's just, yeah. Even in Air Force One, when the Cold War had ended, the wall had fallen, and, just, uh, I don't know, I guess they're Neo- Soviet terrorists. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, Fury tells Rhodey about the scrolls, and because of the underreaction that Fury, that Rhodey has, it's like, okay, well, how long have you known then? And, yeah, for, for 15 years. So, some... I guess, does that make it, like, 2011? Because this is, like, 2026, post-blip. So, since some, since before the Avengers, I guess. Okay. I mean, I guess there's not, you know, it's one of those things, like, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna go around telling people for all that time? I'm sure it, he's probably kept other secrets. He's military. And, yeah, I really appreciate this thing about, you know, black people have to fight to, to get power, to, what was it, wrest away power from mediocre white men. And he, you know, he specifically says Alexander Pierce, which, not loving that, I mean, the character deserves it. But, um, hold on, what was the actor's name again? Oh, right, I guess that is the wrong way to find out. Um, let's see, he was in... Uh, the Winter Soldier, and he was played by Robert Redford, you know, like, wait, okay, I, I must have been thinking about someone else, I guess, I could have sworn that I heard that he died, I guess Mandela Effect or something. I, okay, apparently Robert Redford is not dead, but according to both IMDb and Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay. I I, I can imagine he, he would have a sense of humor about it. I'm just like, don't speak ill of the dead. And, you know, incredibly talented actor, not the best choice to... But I agree, you know, minorities always have to work so much harder than mediocre white men. Let's see. And... Uh, 
And I mean, you can just look at the 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 Phantom Menace, you know, bunch of mediocre white men who are just yeah. We've got Trump compared to Obama, just yeah. Now Let's see. And, and yeah, I do appreciate, you know, after that, you know, Ro Rody points out that doesn't mean that we have to, you know, the fact that we have all this history does not mean that I'm going to blindly support you. And Rody does legitimately feel like Fury isn't up to it, which, yeah, you know, it, 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 is, it is a theme. It, you know, we're two episodes in out of the six. Both episodes so far, someone he used to work with has said, you are not up for this. This is not for you to do. You know, Rhodey in this episode, Sonya in the first episode, just, yeah. So, that is, you know, it, it is this thing, of, and, and, you know, so far the show itself hasn't done a lot to disprove that notion, you know. I'm, I'm guessing over the few, over the coming episodes, we're going to see Fury really step up. And I, I really love it's such a badass line. I'm Nick Fury. Even when I'm out, I'm still in. And that door was locked. And now it isn't. Now what does that tell you about me and doors? <laughs> Just so badass. Love Olivia Coleman being badass. And then she gets into the the room and you know the guy's punching the the guy we soon find out is a scroll haven't your mother hasn't your mother warned you you could lose an eye beating meat like that <laughs> and yeah you know she takes over the the interrogation and i really appreciate like just you know she she gives the guy a chance, you know. She's like, so we can do this the you know the the easy way or the other way. I'm going to break free of these chains and beat you. The other way then, and she gets out the the clipper thing and cuts off a, a finger, really pushing that PG thirteen. I get. I mean. Deadpool 3 de is is happening. It's going to be an R, so they're they're you know warming up to that evidently. And I have to wonder if she was a little surprised that the finger didn't grow back and then, you know, a conventionally attractive white woman would fake her death with with you know I think that's enough that if you get it, you get it. If not, I'm gonna cut it off there. Did not mean for that pun, pun, so that I don't spoil that movie because it's more fun than it has any right to be, and not the most stupidly written of its kind. And yeah, we see the the you know computer has like Groot DNA. It has. I forget which, but at least one of the children of Thanos. It has Extremis, so you know, yeah, they're they're they could seriously become a very major threat if they were able to give a million people Extremis DNA, or you know, I think it was it was maybe Cull Obsidian DNA. You know, that that's not gonna that's not nothing. And then she's like, you know. So, when I inject you with this, your body will reach 160 degrees. That will make anyone talk. Of course, the smart ones talk before that. Are you a smart one? I guess not. And you know, he's like, shoot it into my arm, and instead it's a it's a butt shot, which I mean that is like I know that sometimes the the that's somewhere you you give a an injection to in order to, you know it like spreads faster maybe or something so it's, yeah and yeah not a fan of a post 9/11 not surprised but not a fan of a post 9/11 piece of American media saying that torture works but 
great effect, great act, like the the veins and and just holy crap, he looked in intense pain. And I like the detail that if you cut off a finger of a scroll, it reverts to the original form. You know that just it makes good sense that it just yeah. You know, it's like, it's something in the brain that allows them to, to shift form, the same as it's something in the brain that allows us to move our fingers. Once they're, once a finger is cut off, you can't move it anymore, so it reverts, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, we're told, you know, there, there's a machine, and it's apparently going to make them stronger. And... Gravik is going to kill me. I'm afraid he's not going to get the chance to kill. Can we? I really hope she has a lot of screen time in the in the remaining four episodes because she did not get anywhere near enough in the first episode, in my opinion. She's so much fun. I'm I'm really loving this, the the smile, the, the cheery chip, chipper attitude, whilst cutting off fingers and torturing people and just yeah. And. Yeah, we we get a, a shot of the the Russian interrogator again, and I gotta say, I've seen enough footage of actual Russians like being frustrated. That guy is on. I don't know if the actor is actually Russian, although it's let's see, didn't it say ah, whatever? Um, if he's not actually like Russian or at least Middle East, yeah. Eastern European, I mean, he's definitely studied their body language because the like, you know, he when yeah when he's like really frustrated, he does like this, and it's just like that's that doesn't look like something like that like a white American or a white British person, you know, that's a that's a cultural thing. I've seen video of of Russians like, yeah, that's that's a. Just great attention to detail. You know, it's possible that it's that they did actually cast someone from there, but and it's just it came naturally to him. But just it looks exactly right. And the and and Gravik and others breach and holy crap! The 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 action is brutal. It really goes to a new level for MCU. Like we've got bones breaking. We've got like. You know, he, like, cuts and and stabs, and there's clearly blood. You know, it's not it's not the first time we see knife stuff, but we don't usually see blood in, in the MCU from that. You know, just, yeah, really, really brutal, and it, it absolutely fits. It doesn't feel, um, what's it called? Gratuitous. You know, I, I remember seeing, I, uh, I forget the YouTuber's name, but the, um, if I remember, I'll, I'll put it in the, in the description box, um, maybe this will find him, and maybe not, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a way of yeah if I if I remember I'll I'll put it in the in the description box anyway um yes he said that the Obi Wan show Obi Wan Kenobi show did not really justify how brutal Darth Vader was being it just felt like oh we gotta top what we've seen before and I would have to agree uh, not really justifying that show but here it does feel like you know, it it's showing just how brutal Gravik is, and how Dostoevsky. If you haven't read any Dostoevsky, you're missing out. And yeah, they they know that he must have told something, so he's shot. And then we end on Fury going up to a house and. You know, we see that you know she's in she's in her scroll form at first and cutting. Yeah, she was like cutting a green. I forget, you know, a green vegetable of some kind. So that's a neat little. Yeah, um, pickle maybe. Anyway, 
and you know, ah, uh, what is you know? There's there's one thing missing. It's, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Wedding ring. Is that better? Almost, and then they they kiss. Very very sweet, and yeah, holy crap! Fury hid his scroll wife from us for all these years. That's wait, was that was that the one that introduced him and Gravik maybe early in the episode? I'm I'm not entirely sure, but but yeah, that's really really cool. I guess the the you know now we know why Fury was. You know when when um, when see I can't call him Hawkeye anymore because that now that's Kate Bishop which is great by the way ah uh, crap what is what is the name again uh, Jeremy Renner's character when when he asked Fury you know can you help keep the off shields files that I have a family and a wife you know a wife I guess the rest of them came later you know he was like way ahead of you buddy just is she an alien too yeah um and that is like yeah when when you have no spy allies left you know he he's broken off with Talos Maria Hill is dead. Rhodey turned him down. Sonia turned him down. You know, I, I yeah, I, I've seen some people say that Everett Ross really has been a scroll for a while and is now dead. I don't know. I mean, I feel like if maybe I guess it's possible. Um, maybe he has served his purpose for the MCU. But the and anyway, yeah, the um, there's not really any the the yeah he doesn't really have any allies left that we know of that you know yeah so so the the um, let's see I guess. You know, yeah. So, so he's gonna. I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be his base at least temporarily, and then the the. Yeah, you know, he's gonna be trying. He's gonna try to figure out what his next move is from there. But yeah, um, really, really loving the show so far, and the the. Um, I think that is what I have to say about this one. So yeah, yes, that is it. So I will be making more videos this week. Make mine marble.